Okay, in this video, we have more new and exciting everyday carry gear that's arrived at Gadget HQ. Let's see what we've got. This is the new F1 Alpha Tactical Folding Knife from Tecto Knives and is a bit of a departure for Tecto who have up until now focused on automatic OTF or out the front knives, otherwise known as switchblade. Tactical in this case means grippy, robust and stealthy. And as you can see, this is all black with no light reflecting surfaces. Tecto are one of the smaller knife makers based in the US, starting life in 2016. I had a chat with them recently to find out what they're all about, and their focus is on finding that balance between quality and affordability whilst creating knives that can cope with demanding use. I don't review a lot of knives like this on this channel, not least because in the UK here, it is illegal to carry a knife like this, which is lock-in. And as you can see, we've got a liner lock here. And also in the UK, the blade length for legal carry has to be under three inches. And this one is just over at 3.1. Nevertheless, for those that don't have those issues, this I think is a really nice knife. The blade here is titanium coated D2 steel with a straight back and a flat grind, a nice mid-range steel that holds an edge well, and this can be deployed quickly and easily thanks to the inclusion of high quality ceramic ball bearings, something you don't often see in a knife at this price. We have here a tough deep carry pocket or belt clip that can swap to the other side for left-handers. There's also grippy G10 scales here with nice contouring and detailing. And we have in here skeletonized liners keeping weight to a manageable 86 grams or three ounces. And the inclusion of a glass breaker tip, which is designed here as part of the hole for the lanyard. This does feel very secure in the hand. And we have a very smooth detent to hold the blade in the closed position. We have here the flipper and when the knife is deployed, it becomes a finger guard. So this feels really secure in the hand. And we not only have jimping on the back of the blade for extra grip with the thumb, but that jimping extends to the liners as well. And that's a really nice detail. All in all, I think this is a great looking, well-made and well-designed knife. And Tecto are a small team and they're all knife enthusiasts and I'm sure we'll be seeing more of them in the future. And as always, if you want to know more about any of the items featured, I'll have links in the description below. This is the S23 from Rovivon. Now Rovivon are known for their small flashlights with lots of features and I'm a big fan as regular viewers will know. This new one from Rovivon is different. The S23 here is much more like a tactical flashlight like my go-to Phoenix TK20R version 2. Rovivon refer to their light as a search flashlight and this one uses a 21700 5000 milliamp hour battery like the TK20 and the first thing to notice is that this has a quad LED array and that means it's optimized for flood over beam and the numbers support this. This has a 4000 lumen maximum output on turbo which is very bright but with a quite limiting 200 meter range and it will only last for 10 seconds on that turbo mode before dropping back in power. And to compare that with the TK20 this has a single LED and a deep reflector. And although it has a lesser maximum power output at 3000 lumens, it has more than twice the range at 475 meters and a longer turbo duration of around a minute before dropping back. And the best way to compare the different beam patterns is to take them outside in the dark. So much broader spread with the Rovivon, it's at 1200 lumens, Phoenix, thousand lumens so much tighter beam so when it comes to lighting up that wall it's brighter narrower spot less bright but with a broader beam and you can see if i add the phoenix it's a much brighter spot than the rovivon is given so that is the rovivon at maximum and that's the phoenix at maximum so one's definitely a flood, 
and one is more of a spot. The S23 is easy to use and you don't often say that about a Rovivon and that's down to this unusual switch arrangement here at the front. In the middle setting it is locked and it's a nice way to keep the flashlight locked out so it avoids accidental activation. Turn it to the right and the light comes on at the previously memorized level and then you cycle through the four light modes by pressing the side switch here. If you want it to go straight to turbo, you press and hold it and then you have the turbo mode and that lasts, as we've said, for around 10 seconds before dropping down. If you slide the switch to the left, it goes into strobe mode and then you press the side switch and it goes in the hard to imagine ever needing SOS mode. Press again and hold and it goes into turbo. We have USB-C charging and the USB-C port is protected with a basic rubber flap. We also have ceramic glass breakers on the bezel here and also a magnetic tail cap so you can attach it to things that are metal. We also have this very clear four level battery indicator which comes on when you press the middle button or when you switch the light on in any mode. If I need a light to grab and go right now I would take the TK20 and that doesn't change with the introduction of the Rovivon. I much prefer the TK20 for a few reasons. One is the fact that it uses a tail switch. A tail switch is always going to be easier to find in the dark and quicker to use. The new switch on the Rovivon is very simple to use, but it's actually quite slow when compared to a tail switch. Also here we've got a side switch and they're always gonna be hard to find in the dark. You end up spinning the flashlight round in your hand trying to find the button. And the fact that the button is recessed means it's going to be tricky to find and use, particularly if you're wearing gloves. Also the range on the Rove Yvonne is not that great at 200 meters, especially for a search focus light. And the turbo mode for me is too short lived at 10 seconds. Having said that, for me, this would be a good option for use in, say, the car. You have a strobe light, which would be good for emergency use if you break down. You have flood lighting, which is great for working at close range, and there's plenty of lights available, and a magnetic tail cap, which could be useful for working on the car. And you've got the ceramic glass breakers, which is a great feature to have on a flashlight that you keep in your glove box. So this is well made and very easy to use, but I think for general all round use, there are better alternatives. This is a zip pouch from Alpaca. Now Alpaca make a great range of bags and carry gear with a focus on everyday carry. And this is effectively their version of a wallet. And in my book, it's a great affordable and practical alternative. So what's it all about? Well, we have two pockets. We have the main pocket, and that is divided in two inside and we have a side pocket. So this can hold a stack of gear, say a load of credit cards. Maybe you want to keep that separate from some cash. Maybe you want to put in a small notebook, maybe something like this Chipolo tracker. How about some coins in the side pocket so you know where they are. And then you could also add maybe some receipts, perhaps an SD card. Um, there's just loads of room in here compared to a traditional wallet. Now the one I've got here is in a limited edition orange. The standard colors are black and green and it's made from a VX21 fabric, which is a tough, lightweight and waterproof sail cloth. This thing weighs just 35 grams or 1.23 ounces and it utilizes AquaGuard waterproof zippers from YKK. The zip pulls here are easy to grab, although I think on the newer ones are a little bit shorter than the ones on here. And you'll see we've got a nylon loop here and that's for use with a hub keychain, which is a quick release magnetic system in case you want to hang the pouch from something like your bag or your belt. I'm not sure I'd want to keep this in my jeans pocket, but if you're the sort of person who keeps their wallet in a pack or a bag, then I think this is a great option. And there's more. What if you want to carry a few EDC essentials along with your wallet at the same time so you have everything in one grab and go pouch? Well, say hello to the Zip Pouch Pro. On first glance, this looks the same. You've got the zip on top and the side zip 
but on closer inspection you'll notice we've also got some external sleeves here. We've got one on this side with the zip and we've got two which are different sizes on the back. So I'm thinking things like say a pocket knife or perhaps a pen or maybe you prefer a flashlight and then the bigger pocket on the front could be a heavier duty multi-tool something like the skelly tool there and then you have everything you might want to carry in one compact pouch this one is also compatible with the hub system with this nylon loop here and this one weighs just 38 grams or 1.34 ounces a tiny bit more than the basic pouch and in short we have here a couple of great well-made wallet alternatives at a very reasonable price next up we have this and this is the james brand palmer utility knife and in the uk we generally refer to this type of knife as a stanley knife or perhaps a box cutter anyway james brand who combine practicality with great design have come up with their own version of the utility knife and here it is and I have to say I really like this it's a refined version of a great tool that's been in use for decades there are lots of nice design details like this lanyard hole here the smooth flat sides and the beveled edge and the subtle branding it also slides in and out of the pocket with ease and is almost like a worry stone in the hand if you know what I mean. The mechanism is very nice indeed. The blade slides in and out as you might expect. Simply press the button down to unlock, slide, and it locks into place. Although I should mention that it doesn't slide out very far compared to say the one in my toolbox. There is a middle set in here which brings this red line into view and that means that the blade is now unlocked and it can be simply pulled out. So this is a very easy way of either swapping the blade over or changing the blade. Once you've done that, just simply retract it back into position and it's now locked in place. So that works really well. Some other thoughts that spring to mind, this is non-threatening around non-knife people, which could be a benefit. Also, if you're flying to a location with hand luggage only and you need a knife with you when you get there, then you could carry this without a blade and then simply buy one on arrival from just about any hardware store. And of course, this never needs sharpening. You just need some replacement blades. On the downside for certain countries like the UK, technically this is a lock-in knife like all utility knives and therefore technically it's illegal to carry without good reason. And that just goes to show how crazy our knife laws are. This isn't the smallest everyday carry utility knife out there or the lightest. This weighs 72 grams or two and a half ounces. Although the size does allow for plenty of grip when you're using it. It could though be the nicest looking utility knife you can buy, especially when you consider the myriad of different colors available. And when it comes to the price, I think for something this well designed and engineered, it's not bad at all. This is the micro blade from micro carry. And in short, this is a tiny cutting tool concealed in a pill shaped case. And as you can see, the cutting edge here is simply formed from two angled flat sides and it does feel very sharp. So this could be the knife you always have with you on your keyring for basic cutting tasks like box opening, getting into packaging, scraping. At a pinch, it could be used as a flathead screwdriver as long as you have a screw loose, which I usually do. And it also works quite well as a mini awl, say for marking a drill point. And what makes this interesting to me is that I don't think this would be confiscated by airport security in hand luggage, especially when small scissors are allowed so this could be the nearest thing to a knife right now that you could take on a flight this was sent to me by micro carry to try out so i'm going to add it to my carry and see just how useful it can be it's available in this titanium version and also in a stainless steel version the steel version weighing in at 12 grams or 0.46 of an ounce and costs around 20 pounds roughly 20 dollars and the titanium version here which weighs in at an incredible seven grams or just 0.25 of an ounce and this comes in at around 29 pounds stroke dollars and there are also options for different end caps if you want to customize your microblade 
here we have a brass one and also a black titanium one. Each one comes with this round carabiner and also this rubber plug affair here and that's somewhere to store the end cap so you don't lose it when you're using the knife so that's a really ingenious solution. This is seriously well engineered and pretty unique and I don't know how practical it is yet in real world use but I do like it. One of the best budget folding knives I've come across is this Luna Light from Real Steel, which recently featured on the channel in my best folding knife lineup. Here we have another knife from Real Steel, and this is the Solace Light. And this is the light version of the Solace, which was first released about a year ago in 2021. The Solis Light is a non-locking slip joint folder with a blade length of just under three inches. So this is legal to carry in the UK. And this is very similar to the Lunar Light, as you can see. We have here D2 steel, which is a good mid-range steel and nice to see in an affordable knife. And the blade on the Solis is different from the Lunar. It's a sheep's foot profile, which allows for a more precision tip control. But very much like the Luna, we have a full length nail nick, which means it's easy to open with a pinch of the finger and thumb. And we have here a lanyard hole and we also have a deep carry pocket clip, which is fixed for right handed tip up carry. We have here G10 scales with contouring and the blade has a very firm half stop or in this knife it's more like a third of the way stop and that brings with it a little bit of extra safety. Both knives weigh 50 grams which is indeed very light and the price is also the same for both. So I guess the question for me is will the Solace be replacing my Luna and for me the answer is no. I think the Luna profile looks a bit nicer when it's open and the lanyard hole on the Solace is a little bit far up the handle and if you've got a lanyard on this it gets in the way of the grip. I also find the belt clip on the Solace a bit fussy in comparison and it actually feels a little bit flimsier too. But the biggest drawback for me is that the Luna has jimping where your finger goes for extra grip which is really welcome and it also helps keep your finger from sliding onto the blade and it also helps you resist unexpected blade closing. The Solace unfortunately doesn't have that. So does the Solace have anything the Luna doesn't? Well no as far as I can see unless of course you want that sheep's foot blade profile. Other than that the Luna offers more. This next item has just arrived from a company called Novium and it's a pen. And that is one of the categories for everyday carry except that this is a desk pen so would not normally feature. However, it is so unusual, I thought you might like to see it anyway. This pen has been identified by Time Magazine as one of the best inventions for 2022. This is the Hover Pen 2. It's a ballpoint pen that hovers at a 23.5 degree angle and that's a nod to the Earth's axial tilt and it utilizes neodymium rare earth magnets with no other form of power required. It's inspired by spacecraft, science fiction and all things cosmos which some will love and others well they'll already have skipped to the next product. This looks like an artifact of the future. It's beautifully made and the packaging is also part of the experience and no doubt the cost. The base here is made from zinc alloy and the whole thing feels really solid. The pen is made from a single piece of high grade aluminium and as you might expect the fidget factor here is very high. The pen is easy to grab and there's no skill needed to put it back into position. The pen cap is attached magnetically to the pen and the stand is a good place to store it when the pen is in use. The pen uses a Schmidt refill and you get a spare in the box and also a tool to help pull the refill out of the pen when it needs changing. Now my preferences are generally driven by practicality over style so this isn't necessarily one I would choose but if you love this design and you're not put off by the price then you won't be disappointed. Okay, this one's a little bit unusual. This is a build 
your own Victorinox knife kit. And I wish when I say that, that you could create a Victorinox of your own making, but unfortunately you can only build your own Victorinox SD knife. And an SD knife is one of these. This is a small Victorinox with a blade and also a combination tool, which is an L file and small flathead screwdriver and some scissors. I backed this on Kickstarter. It's from a company called Parallel and it cost me 59 pounds. Or to put it another way, about three times the price of this ready-made SD. And my new one doesn't have scale tools like the tweezers or the toothpick. But what it does have is the fun of building it and a fully transparent body so you can see how it works. And I like the idea of that. And it also makes for easy maintenance as you can replace parts if needed. And you can choose brass or titanium scales instead of the polycarbonate ones here. And also the material used in the cross here, if you so wish. All the tools and springs used are original Victorinox parts. And as you can see, you get everything you need to build this, including the Torx screwdriver and this little jig here, which helps in the final assembly. All I need to do now is build it and Parallel have provided a link here to a video showing me how to do that. And I've watched that now. So it's time to give it a go. Finished. So here we have the finished article and it is interesting to see the mechanism inside a Victorinox knife and makes for a bit of a talking point too. I do though think that the titanium and brass options probably better justify that premium price point. And if you want to see my favorite factory made Victorinox knives, then click on this link here. That's it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.